Hello and welcome to the special collection of short business support podcasts that have been designed and created, especially with you in mind, the local business owner. This has been an unprecedented time of lockdowns. It's an experience we never would have imagined would exist in our lives. When would we have thought that our businesses would be closed for such extended periods? We're now into almost a year of it, so I know it's starting to affect a lot of us in a much stronger, impactful way than it was last year. This masterclass will give you practical information, professional tips and inspiring ideas. I really want to help you revamp and re-energise both yourself and your business as you prepare to reopen your doors. I'm Mags McAlpin. My business is called Creating Retail Magic. It's a creative retail consultancy where we provide training, mentoring and advice all about the creative side of retail. We call it retail theatre. So think about the magical customer experience that you can offer every person that comes into touch and contact with your business, your products, your brand, your space and your services. It's that sensory experience, the sights, the smells, the sounds and maybe even the tastes that makes your space special. So perhaps you'd like to take your pen, your notebook, grab yourself a cuppa and enjoy these next 20 or 30 minutes as you listen to the Spring Into Retail 2021 programme. I guarantee that you'll take at least a few new ideas and inspirations away that you should consider as you prepare to reopen your doors and to welcome your customers back in. And don't forget, of course, that your local council is there. It's just a phone call away. Please do give them a call or drop an email to them and see what guidance there is and maybe support that you can avail of. So enjoy the masterclass and I hope you get some nice tips. Hello and welcome to this podcast um, for the Spring Into Retail Masterclass sessions. This podcast that we're doing here is a short, really informative, exciting presentation, which is all about your branding. Essentially, branding is your personality and what can you do to really optimise the assets on that? I'm delighted to introduce our guest speaker for the session, which is uh, a, a very highly, who, who's a very highly regarded and, and uh, respected member of her profession. It's Esther Haller-Clark from Haller-Clark Practice. So Esther is a very experienced creative consultant with a really strong artistic ability and knowledge in, in marketing and communications. Um, audience development is another one of her skills to name but a few. So really what we're going to talk about is building connections and relationships for you with your customers across a multiple range of networks. It's to broaden your reach and to, to develop your, your brand uh, awareness with your audience. And, and this is a real passion of Esther's. So you will really, really benefit from that. I guarantee that you'll come away with some really good, interesting ideas and tips to, to re-energize and, and motivate um, you for preparing as you, as you get ready to reopen your doors and to, to welcome your customers back in. Uh, Esther's projects include Belfast Christmas Market and, and many markets across the UK, in fact. Um, she's worked with the likes of Castle Leslie, Atchison and Glover, um, the British Council and many tourism boards, um, including Northern Ireland, Tourism Ireland itself, Scotland, Visit Belfast and again, to name but a few. So I'm really, really delighted to, um, to be able to welcome Esther into our, into our session that we're recording now for you. Um, and I'm sure you're going to really enjoy all the, the great information she has to share with you. Hello, welcome Esther, great to see you. Good to see you too, Max. Thanks for having me along. You are more than welcome. I have to say, I'm really excited about this short um, session that we're doing together, all about branding and, and developing your personality. I completely concur with you that when I see a brand, I really want to feel the person um, behind the brand because especially with a with a local small business we are our businesses and making that connection with our audience is so so important would you say absolutely it's all about personality it's all about personality I would you know when people are thinking about brands if, if you're not used to dealing with brands it can be quite intimidating so just exchange the word brand for personality what's my personality and that's a really good way to help you understand what it is you're trying to achieve so what about if we're actually, as we all are, I think to certain degrees, a little bit shy, really, but having to put on the face. So how can we kind of fake it till we make it? Well, that's exactly it. And there are very simple little things that I'll guide you through as we're talking today that you can do, that you can, how you can apply your brand. Um, and there's ways that you can apply your brand that travel far beyond you. You know, um, typical things like 
whenever at the minute a lot of people are doing mail outs for example they're, they're you know people can't come into the shop you have to mail things out mm -hmm. well don't just put it in a jiffy bag and send it out make sure that it's wrapped nicely perhaps get some stickers made with your brand identity and stick your tissue paper together or a nice little a6 postcard which has your brand identity and then on the back just a handwritten thank you for shopping with us that means a lot it makes people think that you're having a personal interaction and brands are about what you described there, that personal interaction, feeling like making your customer feel like they're special, like you have a relationship directly with them and your brand helps you to do that. You know, that's a really great idea, especially the whole handwritten personal touch. I remember oh, many years ago working with a, a client doing some retail mentoring and development work with her. And she was a, a maker, an artist who... Um, specialised in the theme of working with seashore and, and sort of seaside themes. And whenever she sold um, a product, um, what she would do is she would include with the, the item, the painting or the sculpture, a tiny little gauze bag, you know, the little voile bags that you get at weddings with the sugared almonds and things. Yeah. Yeah, so she would get the teeny little small ones, put some sand and shells in it, and a little tag that said, may you always have shells in your pocket and sand between your toes. See, that's so lovely. Yeah, yeah, very simple and, and very low cost, of course. Yeah, and that's the thing, stickers, postcards, very cheap. You can do those really qu quick turnaround, very cheap to do, not expensive, but they make a big difference. Well, th that's exactly it. And it's, again, it's trying to sort of just, I guess, connect um, with your customers, you know, and... You know, if a customer came into your shop, they would have an, an experience. We talk about the customer experience. Because your customer can't necessarily always come into your shop, you should think about the customer experience in their home. So they're going to receive your goods into their home. What do you want them to experience when they open that package? Exactly. So we've all had it. I've had things mailed to me over the recent months um, and it's just wrapped in plastic, possibly too much plastic. That's another thing to consider. People are very conscious about the environment now. So be careful with your packaging. Um, and if it's just wrapped in a piece of plastic and there's no personalization or effort, I kind of feel a bit cheated, especially if it's an item that's not well, not very cheap. You know, if it's something that I've invested in, yeah. I want to feel that a bit of effort has been made to make sure that my experience is yeah. as good at my home as it is if I were in the shop. Super, super. And, you know, then that personal experience, personality. I think on, on that point, I'm going to bring us into this lovely presentation. Um, let me share this, if I may, with our audience now. Oh, I've just gone right to the end there. So there we go. That is our starter. Um, I'm going to pass it over to you, Esther, and let you share all your, your knowledge and, and fountain of wisdom with us. Off we go. Okay, so the title says it all, and we've already touched upon this, branding, it's personal. So it's personal how people experience your brand, and it's personal, your personality is what you put into your brand, and it's how you communicate. So if we just go to the next slide, yeah. um, Max, I'll talk you through what we'll be covering today. So we're going to talk about, well, what is a brand? You know, some people, it can be quite intimidating. Why do you need a brand? You know, why, why should you have one? We talk about logos and identity. So what is a logo? What is an identity? Tone and tags. When I'm talking about tone, I'm talking about the tone of voice. And tags, that's the strap line that you often see that accompanies um, logos. How, when you've created your brand, what do you do with it? And then towards the very end, we'll just do a quick recap of the top tips. So if we move on to the next slide, let's get going. Let's get started. Brilliant. Oh. Um, let's have a look. There we go. What is a brand? So what's a brand? Okay, so it's not just a logo. That's the biggest misconception. A lot of people think a brand is a logo and that's it. It's not. It's your visual identity. So photographs that you use. I see you've got a beautiful little scene there behind you, a little vignette of plants, etc. That's beautiful. That very much reflects you are someone who goes in and you dress spaces in retail. Well, that's very apparent by where you're sitting today. So you've represented your brand by the environment that you're in. The tone of voice, like I mentioned, is the words that you choose to use, the energy in how you talk. Um, that's the written word, taglines, written word. If you do interviews, if you speak to your customers, that little thank you note that you write, that's all part of your tone of voice. And it's the external representation of your values. So when I talk about that, it's 
your values are almost like what how you want people to perceive your what you do or your products so you talked about your friend and the little bag of sand and the little shells she wanted people to realize that where the inspiration for what they've got had come from so that was very very important to her nature and the beach and water very important to what she does and she reflected that in the little little token gift that she gave yeah. every single thing you write and everything you say should be on point should be your brand so it's a personality okay it's like playing a part it's like taking a role imagine you were an actor and you had to suddenly play an 80 year old woman well it would change how you stand it would change your tone of voice it would change your movement it might change the type of language that you use Mm -hmm. so think of a brand in a similar way you're creating a personality yes everything you do how you open a door how often you so how often you post online so if you're not consistent for example in posting online then your potential customer might think well are they consistent in the value of their products are they consistent in quality are they consistent in customer service so you want your quality your activity and your product to all be consistent Every single thing you do reflects your brand. Your brand, essentially, like we said at the start, it's your personality. And, you know, Esther, that's a really salient point that, you know, that you've made there. I was very excited for us to do this session together because, you know, reflecting your, your teaching now onto myself and thinking about it, one of my big failings for my own business development is that consistency. I, I fits and starts. I get very excited. I'm posting on Insta. I'm putting together little vignettes or promote, you know, posting or promoting work I'm doing. And then suddenly there's a, a sort of a, a big gap, a chasm. And it's because life has got in the way. I'm, I'm homeschooling. I'm trying to get the house tidied up. I'm trying to develop new business, for example. And that would be one of maybe the takeaways that I'll take from our session is that to sort of identify how I can be more consistent in a more in a realistic, achievable way that I can attain that objective instead of the usual thing, thinking I have to do this and either not doing it or doing it maybe halfway and then beating myself up about it. You know, and, you know, you've hit a couple of nails in the head there. There's a couple of things I'm going to just reflect on what you've said. Don't set yourself the unachievable. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Set, do do a, a a rough kind of plan. Don't say, okay, I'm going to do an Instagram post every day, and it's going to be a five minute video, and then there's going to be photographs, and I'm going to write something. If you're trying to homeschool, that's just not realistic. You know. Absolutely not. If you instead say, I'm going to do a video once a week and I'm going to post a picture every second day, that's possibly more achievable. You know, mm -hmm. you can start and, and also as well, create a block. You know, you can think, oh, I'm going to do a picture every day, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly you're thinking, oh, no, what am I going to put? What am I going to post? Write little notes to yourself. If you get ideas, you know, yeah. I'm going to sneeze for a week. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, you know, and the other thing as well that I was going to say to you was, so keep it realistic time-wise, but also you need to have integrity in your brand. If you try to pretend you're something you're not, yeah. very quickly people will see. Yeah. So really think about that. Don't suddenly decide, um, you know, if it's like if you're somebody who's really into nice, calm, peaceful music, don't suddenly try and pretend you're a punk rocker because people will know very quickly that you're not. So that's a very key point as well. Keep it real. But, oh, I like that. And, you know, it ties in very well. There's um, another one of these podcasts in our series of Spring Into Retail. Um, and it's all about top tips for your photography. And our expert uh, photographer who delivered that session with us, one of her top tips was go easy on the filters. Yeah. And it ties in really well because we were chatting about um, this day and age, everyone putting a filter on everything or, you know, maybe hitting the, the beauty button. And we all need a little, maybe sometimes we feel we need a little tweak here and there, but it's, it's, it's the balance. And again, as, as, as our colleague there said, just go easy. And maybe that's the message as well. Go easy on the filter that you're trying to put on your life. Yeah. And don't promise what you can't deliver. Yeah. Okay. So people do this often when they're writing a description of a product. Yeah. And remember, your description of your product is also part of your brand because it's your voice that you're using. 
So if I wrote something to you like, um, here is this pen and it's going to change your life. This pen will make you feel happier. This pen will make you feel like you've achieved. Well, that's, that's a bit over the top. You can't guarantee that this pen is going to make, but you could say, I got this pen and it made me happier. There you are. You see, and you see that slight subtle difference. Yeah. So don't overpromise. Uh -huh. Keep it realistic. So keeping it realistic and watching their time, which is flying by on us already. It is. Plenty to get through. I know. Okay. So why, why would you need a brand? I think we've covered some of this already, but just to reiterate, the most important thing about this is about building trust. If you've got consistency, you can connect with your customers and you're consistent in that connection, you will build up trust. You will build a reputation and people will feel loyalty towards you and they will feel that they can rely on the standard that they're going to get either in the product or the customer service. So another thing about a brand is recognition. So the brand logo that we've talked about, and we're going to come back to that now in a second, the brand logo. Once that's created and you have your strap line, for example, you want it to be that someone is walking down the street in a city uh, 100 miles away from where your shop is and your logo is on the bag that they're carrying, that it's recognisable. Every time that you put a postcard in with something that you send out, there's the chance that someone might stick that postcard in their fridge. So what you want is to create opportunities for your logo to travel. And then people start to identify and recognize that in places beyond the confines of your shop or your virtual shop. Yes. So that's really, really important. So that's about recognition. OK, mm -hmm. you remember that your brand is also something you can use to reinforce your vision, what it is that you want. OK, and it can also be used to help steer your marketing activity. So it can help you in deciding what marketing you're going to, to do. So some brand identities lend themselves, for example, very well to video. And some lend themselves better to a static image. Some lend themselves very well to t-shirts. Some lend themselves better to postcards. So that's how it can kind of re be reflected in, in the activity that you choose to do. So it's about making connection, building trust, creating loyalty, and reinforcing the personality of your product or your place. Um, and you know what I love about what we've just talked about there is that I know we are living very much in, a, in an online world and one of our sessions in this masterclass series looks at how to make your social media marketing really matter. But you've described, in a, you know, to complement that online world, what I would say, lovely old school, you know, offline marketing, t-shirts, little postcards, reaching out to your customers, especially these days where at the moment we can't bring our customers into our physical spaces with us. Yeah, so instead bring the joy into their rooms. Yeah, that's yeah. What do. bring a little bit of joy and reinforce. So it's it's really you know it's the postcard one is a real uh, is a real trick. Mm -hmm. Every time you send something, that is a real trick. It's very very cheap to do, um, and like I say, if it sits around, sometimes if you don't write anything on the back of the postcards, people will use those postcards to send to someone else to send a little message. I know I do that. Mm -hmm. If I get a nice postcard from something, I'll post it on to a friend. Yes. So therefore, they're doing the work for you. They are making your brand travel. Yeah, they're almost like your silent salespeople. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> and then going on. our next area. Yes, tell me about yeah. my brands. I have a okay. brand. What is it like? How can I analyze where I'm at? So think about your product or your place, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're selling, okay? And think about who you want to buy that product or who you want to visit your place, okay? Is what you're saying going to be understood by the people you want to come or the people you want to buy? So in the same way, if I was explaining something to you as an adult, I would use different words if I was explaining the same thing to a child. I would change the words, but I'm still explaining to get to the same end. So think about your audience and think about you know, if you are going for a very vibrant, youthful audience, for example, what's their attention span? If they've got a short attention span, you don't want big paragraphs. Mm -hmm. If they are very vibrant and active and outdoorsy, then you've got to use language that makes them feel healthy and fit and outdoorsy. If this is about being cosy and warm and snug and secure, you want to use language that makes people feel that way. So make sure that your messaging matches your audience. OK, make sure that they get it. You know, so don't 
overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. Don't use words that people might not understand. Keep it really simple so that people understand it. When we talk about, a lot of people hear about USPs, unique selling points, okay? A unique selling point is what is special about you and what you're offering, okay? Does your brand show that? Does your brand show what's special? So for example, if you are a spa and you're in the most beautiful environment, make sure that you use that in your photography, make sure that you use that in videos that you do, make sure that you mention it in the words that you write. So share the unique selling points about what you're doing. We talked about being authentic before. So think about, does the brand truly reflect the promise of your products? You know, don't, if, if you know, for example, that the pen that you love and changed your life is only gonna last for a month because the ink will run out, don't say this lifelong pen will, you know, keep it, keep it real. And then does the brand reflect the values that you want to represent to your customers? So again, this is back to personality. If you want your customers to feel that you are loyal and energetic and trustworthy, does your brand suggest that? So uh, integrity is very, very important. So those are things to think about. Is it easily understood? Is it matching who I want to come along? Does it sell the unique elements of my business or my product? Am I able to reflect the promise and the integrity of what I'm doing in the brand? And if your answer to any of those is no, and you need to look at your brand. If your answer to those is yes, fantastic, you're on point. Great. And, and I guess in, in analysing that as well, you identify opportunities to kind of bring it up even in, a little notch more. Absolutely. And the, the key thing, this is really important. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think you develop your brand and then that's it. It's <laughs> ever evolving, ever evolving in the same way that the world around us changes you should be responding to the changes around you. So yeah. your language might need to change, you know? Uh, and COVID's a really good example of that, you know? Yeah. Recovery plans, really, really good example of you have to respond to the environment within which you are. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. make sure you'll, you'll hear in business sometimes people use the word agile. That's a real buzzword at the moment in business. And it just means be flexible. Make sure that you're not so rigid that you can't move with what's going on around you. Yeah, yeah. Because again, I think on a from a mental health level, you know, we are our businesses. Our business are us. It's that inextric inextricable uh, connection that we have. There's a there's a beautiful quote from a Yeats poem. Um, I think it's among school children. It's the poem, and it's the the couplet says, "How can we tell the dancer from the dance?" And I always think about that when it comes to us as local business owners. We we cannot separate ourselves. No business ultimately you know of course we do to a certain level but we it, it's our vision it's our passion maybe it was our inheritance that's why we have the business yeah so it's using to go back to brand and personality how can we have our personality become agile to use your word there to cope in these new environments that we're in very much so think about very well-known brands that you might know for example there might be a very well-known mail order brand yeah. and the CEO of that mail order brand has got a bad reputation right. that will impact the people who use the brand yeah think about how quickly a, per, a famous person can say something as a brand ambassador yeah. that can really make the change between the product selling out or the product not selling at all so always think about that yeah yeah it, there's a, quite a lot of food for thought let's have a look at your next slide there and then Oh yeah, logo and identity, yeah. So a logo is important, but it's not the only part of your brand, as we said, it's, a, it's part of the brand. But a logo, what I've tended to find is powerful logos are simple logos, don't overcomplicate it. Not too many colors, not too much fine detail, because you've got to think about how it's going to be reproduced over lots of different collateral. And when I use the word collateral, I mean items that you would produce that help to sell your product. So it might be shopping bags or packaging or the postcards, or newspaper ads, or flyers. That's collateral. So you've got to think about how your logo is going to look on all those different types of collateral. Consider the font that you use. Is it legible? Is it easy to read? Is it complicated? Can it look a bit flowery and messy? You want to keep it simple. So for example, on a billboard, you do a big billboard. Do you know how long you have people's attention for? Yeah. Three seconds. Oh my goodness. Three seconds. We are goldfish. <laughs> so three seconds. So you've got to think, can you read it clearly? 
Yeah. And, you know, think about, do you need words? Some brands don't have words. You hear the phrase of taglines. Some mm. brands have them, some brands don't. We're going to go on a little bit more to talk about that and you're going to see the power of the tagline and the power without. But also just before we do that, think about the colour, okay? Think very carefully about colour and how it might sit with your product. So your brand, if you're a shop, for example, and you're selling lots of different products, how is the colour of your brand going to look alongside if you're wanting to sell a product, okay? But also not too much colour, not too much. Maybe two, three maximum, and don't go beyond that. And there's also a very simple practical reason for that. Two colour print, i.e. when you're printing something that has only got two colours in it, is cheaper. Once you move and you go to three colours, that becomes a full colour print. And that pushes up the price of producing what it is you want to print. So that's just practical, yeah. you know. That's so two colour is cheaper yeah. than three colour. Uh, that, that could be the, the one gift you have given to one of our viewers in this session. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, it's, so, it's so true. So if we move on to the next slide. Oh, okay, yeah. Your brands, okay. okay? And I just want to talk you through, most of these are instantly recognisable, but I want you specifically to look at the power of words and the power of visuals uh -huh. and the power of colour. So I'm going to ask you, there's a box in this uh, on this slide and it's a little turquoise box. Do you know what that brand is? Absolutely, I do, yes. <laughs> and what is that brand? Well, that is Tiffany's jewellery, yeah. Okay, so they have acquired the turquoise and made it their own. Yeah. Okay, and the reason, and how they've done that is they use it consistently. So going back to what we said, they mm -hmm. pick the colour and they use it consistently. Every Tiffany's box is turquoise. When you go into any Tiffany store, the main colour that you will see in the carpet or the drapes is turquoise. When you buy a product, turquoise. You know, the packaging is turquoise. So they have kept that consistency going so much so that now you don't even need to see the word Tiffany's. You don't even need to see jewellery. You just see the box yeah. and you know. So they've read, you know, and they've also made a Tiffany's box. And, a, you know, we talked about the theatre and the experience. Yeah. They've made it a theatrical experience to get a Tiffany's box and undo the bow and open the box. It's all part of the experience. And okay. The bow, actually, I was I was very, very uh, lucky, I suppose is the right word. My husband brought me for a surprise to Tiffany's in New York for our engagement. And um, I was very overwhelmed by the whole thing, which was lovely. But I remember there amidst all the excitement, when they wrap up the box for you, um, there is a special way that they tie the Tiffany's bow that they don't actually put knots in it. And the idea is when you put, pull the tail of the bow, the bow kind of slithers and collapses in this beautiful fluid motion. And yeah. it enhances the whole magical experience of it. And that's it. It's about the detail and the experience. The yeah. more attention you pay to the detail, the better the experience will be. Great. Okay? Yeah. So then look at some of these other logos here. Sometimes a brand creates a character. And yes. the character becomes the brand. Yes. So, for example, down in the bottom left-hand corner there, we see Tony the Tiger. Uh -huh. And he's from Frosties. Uh -huh. And you recognise Frosties as soon as you see him. You know where he's from. And then some uh, brands don't have a, a, a logo and they don't need words at all. And you immediately know what they are. So, for example, if I were to say to you, underneath that apple, yes. that yellow sign, what is that for? Yeah, well, we know that the golden arches, don't we? <laughs> well, there you go, the golden arches. You know exactly what it is. Yeah. And then there, you know, Uber, when you look below, very, very simple. They've kept it very simple. And, yeah. and uh, Starbucks, a bit more complicated, yeah. but consistent. It's two colour, but there's a bit more detail. But note, it's two colour, okay? Mm -hmm. So all of them, what they have in common is they're quite simple. Yeah. You know, there's nothing particularly complicated about them. Uh, yeah. Look at the one at the top centre. Yeah. And this is where a brand evolves. This yeah. was Amazon. Yeah. And it used to say Amazon then with the smile underneath it. And now when you look at Amazon Prime bands, etc., they just have the smile. So yeah. Amazon have got beyond having to write the word Amazon. They can just do the smile. And that's how their brand has evolved. So as recognition for it grew, they, uh, they could drop the word and just have the tick. So if you move on to the next slide, I've got a little uh, yeah. a little challenge for you, just to reinforce our point. 
Our, our time is going so quickly. We're almost on the home run to be wrapping up our session, unfortunately, but I'm really enjoying this. So let's have okay. a look. Let's go super quick. Tell me far through, what are the brands? Starting from the top left. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, Nike, I guess. Coca-Cola, Fanta, Sony, Volkswagen, Lego, Starbucks, Vodafone. Yeah. Hmm. Stuck on that one. And the last one, oh goodness. Is that Amazon where the little on the arrow? There you are. So I this, the penultimate one, the second last one there. Tell me about that that's one. That's PayPal. That's PayPal. Okay. So unless you use PayPal, that's not going to be a familiar one to you. But I think this reiterates the point of how, how a good brand, you don't even need to see the full logo to know what that is. Yes. So if we move on to the next slide then, yes, I want to just talk to you about taglines. So sometimes you'll see a brand with words and sometimes you'll see it without. So what's the point of a tagline? What is a tagline? Well, it's a short, memorable phrase and it's a descriptor for your values or your products. OK, yeah. uh, it can be used to reinforce your message and it should always leave a good impression and maybe make your audience feel that they want to know a bit more. OK, so it's a short, not big, long tagline. So if you move to the next slide, I'm going to be able to show you some examples so we looked at some of these brands before, but now here are their taglines. Tesco, every little helps. McDonald's, I'm loving it. You really want to sing that when you hear that one, don't you? <laughs> Tony the Tiger, they are great. Mm -hmm. And Nike, just do it. But here's the interesting thing. If you closed your eyes and I just said to you, every little helps, you would know I was talking about Tesco. Yeah. If I said to you, just do it, you would know I was talking about Nike, et cetera, et cetera. So the tagline is so strong, it stands alone. And the logo is so strong, it stands alone. And when you bring them together, they reinforce each other. So they're both reinforcing the message, okay? So if we move on a little bit then, yeah. onto our next slide, I want to talk to you about that tone of voice. So in Nike, for example, just do it. There's a sense of urgency, get on with it, because it's active and it's movement. In the Frosties, they're great. It's about mm, yummy. It's it's a treat, you know, that sugary sweetness, yummy. Um, in uh, McDonald's, I'm loving it because again, it's a treat. You're enjoying it. It's making you feel good. It's a comfort. And Tesco, that very little, you know, they slap the bum and it's every little helps and you hear the little tinkle of the money. It's efficiency. Uh, it's efficiency in time and it's efficiency in money. So that's the tone that they're using to paint the picture. So choose the style that you want to write in, whether you're energetic or hopefully not grumpy and stick with it. Stick with that style. Always use that style. It's an extension of your visual identity. How you speak, the tone of voice is the extension of the logo um, and your brand voice expresses your personality. So you, it, it will influence how you're perceived. So if your language is sloppy or it's a bit grumpy or you haven't taken care over the use of it, that will reflect how people perceive your brand. Okay, mm -hmm. so move on then to the next to the next slide. So you've developed this brand. So you've got your logo that you're going to use. You're going to think about the size of it. You're going to think about the color. You're going to think about your font. You're going to think about how you present yourself. Are you going to use a tagline? What's your tone of voice? How are you going to write? And you've done all of that and you've got it all there. Now, how do you use it? Where do you use it? So there are some very obvious places. Signage, shop fronts. Um, point of sale, packaging, uniforms for your staff, advertising. So you can do print advertising, which is uh, newspapers, magazines, or um, and you could do outdoor advertising, which is billboards, phone boxes, bus sides, etc. Video and audio. So video is very important. If you create video now, you can do a, a, an end board or a title board. Um, and that's where you can put your brand very strongly or you can have your logo present in the corner or you could be wearing a t-shirt with your logo on it um, and you can re-edit videos and use them in lots of different ways and you can use them for video on demand advertising which is actually much cheaper than you think um, or you can use it on your Instagram or your Facebook or your, or your Twitter or TikTok or whatever platform you want to use and then there's audio so you think well how am I going to use my brand on audio like a radio ad yeah. remember the words that you use, the tagline, they're part of your brand. It's not just what you see, it's what you hear. That's part of your brand. So if we go on to the uh, next slide, which I think we're coming towards the end of our presentation, I want to show you some examples of how the brands we looked at before have applied their brand. 
Okay. Top left hand corner. Where are we? Oh, <laughs> well, looking at that beautiful turquoise chandelier and backdrop, I guess it has to be Tiffany's. Indeed. But you see, there you go. They've reinforced the brand color in, in, in the shop. Look at the Nike store in the center there. The yeah. most prominent thing you see is their phrase. Right? And then the tick comes underneath. So the, the, the tagline has become so well known that even if you saw just do it, you would know you're in a Nike store. Yeah. Starbucks. There's the Starbucks logo. Look at the green. The green, every Starbucks looks the same. Every Starbucks you go to, that signage outside the shop will be the same. It might be in a slightly different scale, depending on the size of the location, but it will be the same and consistent. No matter what country in the world you're in, you'll recognize a Starbucks. Lego, I thought was quite fun. Their product they've used in this t-shirt and instantly you look at it, you know it's Lego. Uh -huh. McDonald's, they've taken elements, there's the golden arch, but they've taken elements of the name of the products. So we've got the Big Mac, they've got the arch, and they've used that on the packaging. Yeah. And nice vibrant colours. There's the Prime van that I was talking to you about, Amazon. They don't even need to say the word Amazon anymore. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Tesco's have used their logo. You'll see they've been able to take their logo and turn it into what we call a mono logo. So if you look carefully underneath where it says food love stories, you see the Tesco symbol yeah. and it's just in white. So sometimes when you're going to print your logo, you've got to do it in either black or white and you can't do it in color. OK, because, uh, for example, in this, the photographs are colorful. If they tried to put their Tesco logo on that, it would get lost. So they make it stand out by making it mono. Mm -hmm. And you should really test your brand when you're developing it to see how it works in black and white and color, okay? Um, then if you look at Apple, they've taken their symbol of the Apple and in, in Instagram here, and they've used it as their little uh, symbol on their Instagram page. When we talk about point of sale and how you can, and this is something that people don't often do, when you're gonna do a gift voucher, for example, don't just have a lovely picture in a card. Why not use your brand? Look, at, teach your appreciation, how clever is this? Yes. Just coming up to end of term or Christmas, yes. Starbucks did vouchers for coffee and called it teacher appreciation. That's because they thought of their audience. Mm -hmm. Really, really clever. So make sure you use your brand to reflect the time of year or reflect things that are happening, Valentine's Day, Christmas, end of school, etc. And then I thought this was very clever. Look at Nike. Not just do it, just tweet it. Fabulous. But you still want them. Yeah, yeah. And what I love about that slide, especially the idea inspired by Starbucks, is instead of just having vouchers for sale, they've created a really definitive call to action. They're telling exactly. you, buy this as your teacher gift. Yes, I'm taking all the thought out of it for you. I'm making it easy for you. There's the solution to your problem. Yeah, very much. Because they people, know people buy solutions, don't they? That's exactly it. So they know that um, people are coming in to grab a coffee or often parents on the school run rushing in to grab a coffee before they go and pick up the kids or they've just dropped off the kids and now they're coming quick to get their coffee before they go to work. Yeah. Oh, I've got to get a teacher present. Oh, look at that. I can do it. As I'm waiting for my coffee, I can have the teacher present sorted. Yeah. Give people solutions. Exactly. And that's what all our viewers of these sessions could maybe think about. What products and services have you got that are the solutions that your customers want? And what is your call to action? It's almost like when Alice fell down the hole in Alice in Wonderland and she was discombobulated. But when she saw the bottle saying, drink me, or the cake saying, eat me, then she knew exactly what to do. So that call to action, I guess, is really important. Very important. Your, your customers want to know what are they meant to do? What, is, what does the product do? What are they meant to do with it? And how is it going to improve their lives? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and your brand should think about those things. You know, when you're thinking about that personality and does it, does it, does what you say about your brand meet your target audience need? Think about those things. What does it do? Why do they need it? And how is it going to make things better? <laughs> simple. <laughs> simple as, simple as. So you want to think about just to recap then on everything that we've talked about today and we've gone through a lot. You want to think about, keep it simple, not too many colors, keep your tagline short and snappy. Every single thing you say and do reflects your brand. So how you behave and what you say reflects the personality of your brand. And you are your very best brand ambassador.
So if you reinforce it, you will give people confidence and you're the best ambassador that you can have. Well, succinctly and saliently said. <laughs> Thank you. You know, uh, thank you. It's been a wonderful session. I have received so many inspirations and ideas from it. Um, and all of these top tips will be downloadable um, through your local council website. So please do to our viewers here, have a have a hop over and have a look at that. Um, I, I, I must say again, um, thank you so much, Esther, for, for your time doing the session with us. Again, I've, I've taken away so many ideas and I'm sure our viewers will too, especially in these really difficult, unprecedented times where we don't have confirmed opening dates. Our mental health levels personally are starting to dip. So I think we're all in this very sort of challenging time. And I absolutely know personally from doing this session with you, I feel more energized and, and motivated to, to even be bothered to have a look at my brand. And, and that's the first step. It is. And you know what? Enjoy it. This should be fun. Enjoy it. It's a fun process. Yeah, yeah. Well, look again, thank you very much um, for this uh, masterclass in, in branding. It's all about it's your personality and I think that really rings true. So let us all go and, and grab a cup of tea and, and have a, an objective look at how we can, you know, ja, ja, zoom and revamp our, our brand using these uh, uh, top tips and, and professional insights from, from Esther Haller. Clark. Um, thank you very much everyone for, for joining us and thank you again Esther. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.